Data folks, if you are tired of sending your resume out there and getting nothing in reply, well then watch this video. Trust me, it's going to help a lot. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Greg Hogg. I've worked for several AI companies during my time at the University of Waterloo, and I've started and founded and developed the company mlnow.ai. Check that out if you're learning data science. This first piece is not the main portion of this video. I just have to make sure that guys, if you are sending your resume out to only a few people per day, or maybe even 10, that is not enough. You really have to send it out there. A lot of people are having trouble finding jobs and a lot of people are sending their applications out. You've got to just beat them through numbers. So trust me, send it out as many times as you can. However, if you've done that and you're still not getting the replies that you want, trust me, this is going to help a lot if you do this next thing. And listen to it closely. It is not just a one sentence, do this. Trust me, watch this video and hear me out. Now, firstly, let me send out some common sense that we all really need to hear. If they're not reaching out to you, you're not good enough. And this is totally okay because life is about getting better. But I'm not just trying to simply say get better. I think we all know that. It's about marketing yourself better. It's about showing that you are better than everybody else. And let me tell you how to do that. When an employer is looking at a stack of resumes, they are going to spend an extremely small amount of time, like think genuinely three to four seconds of looking at your resume and seeing if anything is interesting. So how do you catch their eye in three to four seconds if you haven't worked at Google? If you have, then this video is probably not for you. But how, if you haven't worked at maybe any company, can you catch their eye in three to four seconds? You can, let me tell you. While an employer does have biases about your education and your past job experience, they will not look past a fantastic project. The vast majority of applicants do not have anything on their resume that shows that you really know what you're doing or that you're unique. The vast majority of people will have a project that's something very simple and it shows you know the landscape, but there is no substitute to making something fantastic if you really want to stand out. So how do you do that? Well, let me tell you. Employers, like everybody else, try to be very efficient or basically lazy. They'll look at your resume and your project, hopefully, for a few seconds. And if they do that, you need to go boom. How do you do that? You need everything to look good. Your resume has got to have the proper spacing and great look. A lot of resumes, they don't have that. That means they're not going to click on your project. If they get to the project, a lot of people make a project, including myself, I've been lazy in the past, that makes stuff that doesn't look good. And I get it, you're a data scientist or a data engineer, or whatever, you don't think that you should learn front end skills and make something that looks good. Well, it just come on, be serious. Like honestly, if someone looks at your page and thinks it doesn't look good, they are going to think it's not good. It doesn't matter how awesome it is in the background. You can say in words that it's so great, but they go and look at it and maybe it's great, but it just doesn't look good they're gonna move on. Like no one wants to look at things that don't look good, that just be serious. Make something in all regards that is going to wow them. It's gotta look good. It's gotta do something unique. Not necessarily insanely unique, but something that's not super obviously been done before. Make things that are awesome. Nobody does it. It's extremely rare that people will put in the work to do that. And that is exactly how you stand out. Because to stand out, you have to do things that are better than everybody else. You have to work harder than everybody else. So do that and stop trying to find a shortcut. Do that and it'll help tremendously. I promise you. Maybe this will help. Think of your project as a potential company that you could start one day if you wanted to. That means it needs marketing and good appearance because you care a lot about the public's perception about it. You care about your mission and your objective. You're not trying to do what everybody else is doing. You're trying to do something unique and solve a very particular purpose. Go ahead and code that. You're all coders. Go and make that. I don't care what they've told you about. If you're a data scientist, you only should learn like deep learning and that's all you care about. No, learn whatever skills you need to show off to the public that you know what you're doing. You might not need to be a master in front end skills, but a little bit could really, really help. Also, if you have a good idea, you could potentially find a partner or two. I would highly suggest keeping your team under four. So one, two, or three is definitely ideal because the communication just starts to really explode after that. And even then it's a big problem but you may want to find yourself a partner or two because then you can do the back end work, someone else can do the front end work, and maybe someone else can do the business objective slash marketing. I don't care, maybe I'm talking about it as a company, that's the whole point. A project is basically a tiny piece, a extremely small idea of what a company could be, and you are trying to do that. I cannot express it enough. 
Now, that is the goal. That is exactly what you would strive for, is to make something awesome and have it never been done before. But let's be honest with ourselves. There's not a whole lot of low-hanging fruit anymore. There's all of these ideas that, you know, might sound cool in your head, and then you go and Google it, and somebody already did it, and it looks fantastic, and most likely it's a company that makes lots of money or is planning to. How are you still supposed to make a project, even though there's so many ideas been taken already? Well, that's just the goal. If you can genuinely make something new and awesome, you're guaranteed a job and probably more than that if you do something great but we are going to have to settle on some aspects. Most people know that they're not gonna put in enough work and they don't have any crazy ideas, so they make some really basic project. That's not really gonna cut it. You're gonna have to fall in the middle somewhere, and I mean, if you can genuinely find an awesome idea, then you should start a company, but it's likely that what you're thinking has already been done before. This is where you have to outdo people or at least make it different. You have to find something in this middle ground where you know that it's not something that a lot of people have done. There's probably a few people, like one or two companies that have done something great in it, but you know that you can do something cool anyway. You can make your own version on it. You can make it look different. You can make it more specific. That is what you're gonna try and land on. Say for example, you had this image right here, which is a meme. It's supposed to be funny, it's really not. Logistic regression is used for classification. There's this guy, which I'm gonna call a douche. I, I think that's okay, sorry dude, bit of a douche. So say for example, you had 100 different of these images, where instead of just logistic regression is used for classification, you had a bunch of different funny things, 100 different memes of the same guy with different text. You could create a machine learning model that took in the text and tried to predict how funny it is. This one I'd label by hand as like a one out of 10. It's really not funny at all. This idea has been taken, like honestly, a meme score predictor. I, I don't even have to look. So according to this article, a few years ago, we have a data scientist and can machine learning techniques predict the popularity of memes on social media? They asked this question, they likely explored it. It is not a brand new idea. And there is likely some companies that are creating these ideas as well already. It's been a few years of people thinking about this idea at the very least, probably way, way more than that. It's not low hanging fruit. It's not this brand new idea. You can't do something absolutely mind-blowing in this area. However, the way I phrase that, right? Like that guy with, you know, creating the data set, that's honestly not something that people have probably thought of before. People have thought of a lot of things. Maybe they thought of that same idea with a different picture. There's no way that someone's actually picked that particular image and made a massive website that shows you, you know, a pretty way of sending in one of these images and then evaluating the score. I highly doubt that's been done before. You could greatly impress someone by doing that. So you can make this into a project. You can show your data science skills and talk about the machine learning algorithms you can make the front end ability. Hopefully you make an application that people can actually submit an image or at least choose from a drop down of images, predict the funniness score. There's a lot of things that you could do that people have not particularly done before that would show a variety of skills. It would show you're unique and that would greatly help. That project that I just described, which is just one that I thought of like immediately, I, I didn't put even any effort into it. That project itself is miles ahead of anything to do with the MNIST image data set or the Titanic data set or any of the really common ones. I see those projects a lot on resumes, they are not helping make something more niche like this. So hopefully you have a better idea of what we're going for here. Something niche, something creative that you can put your heart into that is really going to show that you can dedicate yourself. You know, you have your own humor, your own personality. That is really going to help. Another example is mlnow.ai. Teaching data science is not a brand new thing. However, I've really, really strived to make the content as awesome as it possibly can. I've taught this myself for a couple of years now. And after learning the front end skills and deployment skills, you know, it can really bring it to life. So I highly recommend if you are learning data science and analytics that you check that out as well guys i hope you have a great day i hope uh, i hear from you because you should drop a comment and then i'll hear from you have a great day guys bye bye